guys, how's it going? Today we are planting up this really sweet dress form with succulents. So my mom and I picked this up on one of our recent antiquing trips. I talked her into buying this. I told her if you buy it, I will plant it up with succulents. Because in my mind I was thinking about how many plants I had accumulated in the studio here and I was also thinking about how busy we're about to be outside in our garden and how I don't wanna have as many inside plants to take care of. So I thought this would be an amazing project, a really good way to utilize the plants that I have and do something really fun. I, the only other topiary I have planted up like this, like on a larger scale, was the bunny. I did a few years ago, Harris the hare. I planted him up with Sempervivums and it, it takes a surprising amount of plants, so I'm hoping that we have enough sitting here. Most of these are plants that I had on hand you can see I did pick up a few more uh, and left these potted just in case I need them. But yesterday I came through the studio and just went through all the stuff I had and uh, got them all, like all the soil removed. Some of them I left roots on, some of them I took cuttings of. And what we're going to be doing is lining this form with moss. So I'm going to be setting this on my work table here in a second. I'm so thankful this comes apart. So it unscrews right there comes off like this and what I'm going to do is put a thick layer of moss along the exterior and then I'll stuff the center full of burlap so that we don't have to use as much moss. But succulents grow, grow really great in moss. They do really well. Uh, you do need to make sure that you're feeding them on a regular basis so they're getting the nutrients they need. Uh, but when we plant like this we just use cuttings rather than fully potted. Uh, something like this would be really hard you know, to pop in little spaces. So we go in and we remove most of the soil and leave something like that that we can easily tuck in. So the plan for this is for it to end up back down at the garden center as kind of just a fun, inspirational piece. Hopefully it's inspirational in the end. I was kind of looking at all of my plants and thinking how neat it would be to have a lot of specific varieties so that I could do like a really heavily patterned dress or like follow the, the lines with the same kind of succulent. But I think it's just gonna be kind of a throw together of whatever we had on hand. Uh, but yeah, it's just gonna end up down there as something fun to display. So let's move this to the table and we'll start the moss step. So this part is easy in theory. I mean, we're just lining the exterior with sheet moss and then stuffing the interior with burlap. Uh, but the top part is not nearly as accessible as the bottom part, because down here I can reach my arm in, but I don't, my arm doesn't reach all the way up there. So this part will take me a little bit longer and I'm gonna start with this part first. All I'm using is preserved sheet moss, which I get in bulk boxes like this right here. I lightly moisten it so that it's easy to mold. And we just wanna make sure to have a fairly decent layer of moss so that we've got enough for those succulents to root into and to attach to. And then I, I think I'm gonna start with the bottom of this first so that I can lay the burlap on top and then we'll start to build up this way. Anyway, here we go. This might take a little while. The top is done. I might have to do a little bit of work on the back <laughs> once I lift the whole thing up, but it went a lot faster than I thought it was going to. I think I've got a really good layer of moss going. I will keep a bowl, like once I set this whole thing up, I'll keep a bowl uh, nearby to tuck in any extra pieces if I find some shallow areas. But you can see the excess burlap coming out from the center. I think that's just a really good way to fill in that empty space in the middle that we don't need because succulents are so shallow rooted. We don't need to fill the whole thing with moss or we don't even need to use soil for this project, which is really, really nice. So I'm just gonna continue on. And I just realized as I was talking to you guys that I am going to have to fashion some sort of bottom here so that stuff doesn't fall out, <laughs> which will probably involve some sort of wire. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep on working here. <laughs>
super happy with how this turned out. I thought for sure when I lifted it up off the table that things would kind of settle. And I think I've got it packed in there so tightly that everything just kind of stayed put. It is dripping a little bit, so I've got a towel on the floor underneath it, uh, but it won't do that for very long because it wasn't like sopping wet moss. Uh, but when you have it laying on the table, all that water kind of collects in one spot. Uh, but now we get to plant it. And I, like I said, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I have no thoughts on the design or anything like that. I'm just gonna start placing some things around and see how it looks. So there are two different methods of planting this sort of uh, arrangement. Uh, the way I'm doing it with moist moss or a moist medium, which means that you need to prep your succulents early like I did. So if you're making cuttings, you know, fresh cuttings like this, you want to make sure you let those stems have a chance to dry and callus. Because if you don't, if you're using fresh cuttings and you're putting them in a wet medium, that moisture can enter the stem and cause a lot of rot problems. So you just want to make sure that your plants are prepped early. I feel like in this case, it's a good idea to have a moist medium, kind of like starting your seeds and, and pre-moistening your soil mix, uh, just because I think everything settles in a little bit better but your other option is to either line your form with dry moss or line it with moist moss and let it dry out completely then you can hot glue even fresh cuttings in and you just put a little dab of hot glue on the stem not on the you know the plant portion up top a little dab on the stem and you can just pop them anywhere you want they hold really well that's the easiest way to do this project for sure um, and hot glue does not hurt the plant at all i mean you want to make sure you keep it down on the stem and not get it on the leaves but they just root like through it and around it it's pretty amazing uh, but in this case we're going to be using i'm going to use the end of this paintbrush right here and we're just going to make little holes for the stems and i think i wanted to start with kind of a larger so see this one right here this one has some roots on it already and we're gonna be using greening pins. So they look like an unfolded paper clip almost. And we're gonna be putting those around the stems. You can puncture the stem too. You can go through the stem just so that you've got a good hole on it. You pop it down in the hole that you just created. And then that greening pin helps keep it in. Sometimes it takes more than one greening pin. A little bit of a fussy process honestly it would be easier to do this laying down probably but I want you to be able to see the whole thing come together so I'm just gonna continue doing that I uh, and hope I'm hoping for the best I have no idea with this mix of succulents how it's gonna look in the end but I think it'll be pretty no matter what so here we go we're all done this is how far I wanted to take it now I did have extra succulent cuttings but as I was putting these on I thought you know what in some cases especially because I don't have a pattern to follow it could look a little bit messy if I were to try to fill the entire form so what I started with was kind of like our main succulent right there almost like a little belt and then there's a little sash right there and I kind of just did little waves all around the form here 
um, leaving some breathing space, which I think was very important. Um, I did incorporate some birch branches. So I started with this one right here and I just really liked that little bit of texture, that little bit of difference that I ended up adding a few little bunches. These came from around um, that daffodil arrangement I made earlier on. Uh, I had these birch branches sitting there still and I ended up grabbing some of these blue elf aloes to bring a little drama. So I had these potted and I just put them in roots and all. I was able to carve out enough space in the moss to do that. I did add a little bit more moss around them, around the back side of them, just tucked it around their roots. And then I put one right here too, because I really felt like that added a little bit more bulk to the arrangement. And it is done all the way around. So let me spin it. I had anticipated not putting anything on the back because I thought, well, we, we could put this up against a wall and that might be a little bit easier, but you know, you kind of just get going with a project and it ended up working out to where I think it's really pretty to have some interest back here as well. So watering for this, <laughs> it is a little bit tricky to keep these uh, really happy and well watered. Now, if you live somewhere where it rains and it can sit somewhere outside and it's a mild enough climate, that's probably the most ideal situation. In our area right now, it is way too cold. We are having nights this week in the teens. So it's way too cold out there. We have to put them somewhere that's very, very bright. Uh, bright indirect light is fine. Um, a little bit of morning direct sun is great as well. Making sure to rotate this thing. Thank goodness it rotates on the bottom. Um, so we can spin it easily so that plants can get equal amounts of light. But for us, it's very dry here. And because it's inside, it's not getting any rain. So we have to water it by hand. You can go in with like a pump sprayer, which would be the easiest way to do it. Hold on, I have one. Something like this right here, I keep one of these for water only uh, so that I can water seedlings really efficiently and quickly. That would work really well in this case because you can take this and just water in between the succulents, really saturate that moss and it wouldn't take you very long. This is doable. It does take a little bit longer, but you can draw up water and then you know direct it where you want it to go. But I feel like pump sprayer or even like a handheld sprayer would be a really good way to do it as well. So I think what we're gonna do is take this top piece off of the base and I'm gonna try my best to kind of cradle it and we're going to drive it down to the garden center right now and we'll show you where it ends up. Sweating. Thank you. Is it on there? Yeah. Is it? There we go. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. Okay, mom cleared out this spot in the front of the store, which is perfect because there's a bank of windows in front of me, the windows right here that are in the doors. So it's gonna get a ton of bright light. Plus, I forgot we have this turntable that you can plug in. So let me turn it on. So it's going to slowly rotate on its own. They won't ever have to even worry about rotating it so that all the plants see light. It's just so fun. It's fun to have it moving too. As far as longevity goes, we should anticipate getting at least a year out of an arrangement like this because succulents, you know, you're using mostly cuttings in an arrangement like this. It takes them a couple of months to start forming new roots. After that time, it takes them a couple months after that to start establishing themselves. And then, uh, you know, they kind of sense the space that they have to grow in. If they don't have a lot of space, if they're put really close together, they can sense that and they just won't grow as quick as they would if they were in their own container with room to spread out. Uh, so we'll have to do minor grooming. You know, a lot of times, especially like with the echeverias and things, you know, the rosette shaped, will get dried up leaves around the base of the plant and that's normal. So we'll do normal grooming and keeping it well watered. It'll probably stay in here until it's nice enough outside. It might end up outside. Might be a little bit easier to take a hose to it than have to take a pump sprayer or a hand sprayer to water it. Uh, anyway, I'm just really pleased with how it turned out and I was so excited to have a good reason to use up some of my succulents in the studio. Now they can be somewhere beautiful and you know people can look at them and hopefully be inspired by it and I don't have to take care of them while I'm taking care of stuff outside in my garden this season. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.